Dave, so firstly, welcome to London Scottish. Obviously, pre-season's underway. How are your uh, first impressions after the first couple of weeks? Yeah, delighted. Um, it's, it's obviously, I've, I've unfortunately not being able to be ever, ever present. I'm dropping in and out whilst trying to sort my move out down here with the family and finish a few things off with, with Loughborough. But um, tremendous facilities uh, here at the Lensbury. Uh, and it's just very exciting whenever you start something new. And there's uh, obviously some people who are here last year and there's clearly uh, a really uh, good close feel between, between the guys and uh, some of the the new guys coming in and seem to have settled very, very quickly and I, I very much see myself as a new guy and yep. I'd like to thank everyone at London Scottish for making me feel so welcome. Yep, um, you spent quite a long time at Loughborough, over a decade. Did, firstly, did you feel the time was right for a new challenge and secondly, what kind of attracted you to, to London Scottish, do you think? Yeah, I was, I was definitely uh, attracted probably for exactly those two things. One, London Scottish is just such a... Uh, a club of history and heritage and uh, known throughout the, throughout the world. Um, very excited about uh, being part of the, the next chapter. Yep. Um, and then the second thing at, uh, at Loughborough is uh, I loved it there, you know, I, it's, uh, I, I think I was good for Loughborough but it was most definitely good for me as well but as you say I'd been there a long time, it makes me feel old when you say over a decade there. Um, and London Scott is just going to bring me a fresh new challenge, uh, a new project, really looking forward to uh, working with a group of new people and uh, in, in a new environment. Uh, so th this is something which will keep me developing which is really important. I want to be the best I, I can be. Yep, um, you, obviously as I mentioned already, you spent a while at Loughborough, um, that was kind of a long-term project. Do you, do you see something similar here, a kind of group of, uh, of young players who are obviously looking to progress? Yeah, I mean, as I just said there, about, about trying to be the best that, that you can be yeah. um, and being on that, that journey. Um, and I try and get performance through development. Uh, and that's not just development as, as a rugby player, but if we all develop as, as people as well, then uh, uh, I think it's a pretty exciting environment to be in if you can create that, that culture and everyone buys into that. Yep, um, let's talk a little bit about your coaching staff. You're alongside Dan George and Jake Sharp. Um, just tell us a bit about those appointments. Yeah, I mean, delighted with him. It's uh, Dan is just. Yeah, he's just a rugby man through and through. He comes from a, a rugby family, and it just it oozes out of him. His, you know, Dan is, uh, I suppose, coming to, to the twilight of his career and looking about trying to uh, uh, transition in, into coaching uh, a little bit. But his enthusiasm for the game, I mean, it's literally, he could be like an 18, 19 year old. It's, it's absolutely infectious. Um, and Jake is. Uh, Sometimes you, you think that he's quite old because he's so experienced in, in the championship, but he's only 25. Um, still very aspirational a, a, as a player uh, and a lot of coaching experience behind him as well. And I really like the way that uh, he thinks about the game and I really like the way uh, he communicates his thoughts about the game as well. So really look forward to working with those guys. Yeah, also um, in the kind of performance team, we've got the likes of Matt Long, Mikey Burrows, who were here last year as well. Have you enjoyed working with them so far as well? Yeah, brilliant. But just been incredibly impressed. Um, I mean, first of all, um, just trust them implicitly from what I've seen of them uh, so far. Uh, real experts in, in their field. Um, and the relationship between a strength and conditioning coach and, and a physio is, is really, really important. And those two guys have got a fantastic working relationship. Um, so that would be really strong for us moving forward. Um, talking of your kind of philosophy, do you have a kind of vision of how, how the game should be played that you're going to try and implement on this squad? Yeah, I, I think it's, um, you know, sort of playing philosophies and, and stuff like that are, are, are interesting ones. I I tend to sort of think about principles in, in, in a way, and we want we want guys that understand things like momentum. We want guys who understand space, uh, how to create it, how to exploit it. Uh, we want guys who make good cue reads on, on the pitch. Uh, we want guys who understand uh, pressure, how to build it on the opposition, on the match officials, etc. Um, so it's not about nailing down this is the one way that, that we play, but very much about uh, being uh, good thinking rugby players on, on the field and able to uh, to react to, to a number of different uh, situations that arise. Uh, we've got the squad training behind us now. Are you uh, pleased with how they're assembling? 
Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it, as I say, it's, it's very, very exciting. It's, we're, we're very bespoke in, in the way that we're, we're dealing with pre-season. There's some guys who, who finished uh, at the traditional end of the championship before the playoffs started. Uh, there's people like uh, Ben, uh, ben Mosses who uh, were playing Bristol in the, in, in the, uh, in the Premiership. Uh, we've got some guys away who are playing international rugby at, at the moment. So people are all starting at slightly different times, um, which uh, that, that provides uh, uh, a, quite a bespoke challenge for uh, the strength and conditioning coaches, etc. Et um, but everyone's come together really, really nicely, and um, it, it's been nice actually. Just the guys who have started a little bit later, you know, some of them actually taking the time out to actually give me a ring and say uh, what a good group of guys that, that they thought, and some of the most welcome that, that, that they've experienced in, in their time in rugby, which is fantastic to hear. Um, you've worked with quite a few of the squad at Loughborough already, some of them that you've brought along with you. Are you um, confident they can make the step from National 1 up to the Championship? Yeah, most definitely. I wouldn't have asked them to join London Scottish otherwise. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think they'll bring uh, a lot, not just as rugby players, but as, as people and to the environment as well, which is absolutely uh, crucial for me. You know, we want we want good rugby players, but we want better people as well. Yeah, um, so for the first time this year, we've got a bit of a group of kind of full-time and part-time. Um, just tell us a bit about how that's going to work. So the full-time guys will be in the afternoon, then part-times come in the evening and uh, kind of all assemble uh, for evening training as soon as that has to work. Yeah, I mean, it's... It it is definitely something that's going to going to be a challenge. You know, I'm not going to sort of shy away from yeah. from that one. Um, so we're going to have part-time players, full-time players, and there'll be some loan players as well, if they're, you know, done in in the right way, um, and really buy into to what we're all about. And that will be important for us in terms of some knowledge share as well with those uh, strategic partners. Um, and it's very much, I, I think, it's about all those respective groups uh, understanding what each other's situation is um, and buying into what London Scottish is, is all about. And everyone cares about the, this place, um, but people maybe can't come training quite as much because they've got a tough job up in up in the city but uh, some of the experiences that they'll face in their jobs are making big decisions etc you know that that's something that the full-time guys can can learn a lot off as well um, so we, we need to invest time and energy making sure that 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 team dynamic really gels and uh, and works together yep um, the guys are doing a lot of gym work a lot of fitness work at the moment how long is it going to be until you kind of get a get your hands on them in terms of the uh, the rugby side of things. Yeah, Gene's very much over to Matt and Mikey, yep. um, get the physical preparation right, and then when we come into July, that's when we'll start putting some rugby detail onto it. Um, and our pre-season fixtures have been announced, uh, Roslyn Park and Cardiff, um, one of them at the Athletic Ground, the Cardiff game will be a, be a great day for all of us at London Scottish, looking forward to those? Absolutely, yeah. um, I mean we're Loughborough, I had lots of drills with, uh, with Roslyn Park and obviously uh, a local neighbour just, just down the road, so that, that'll be fantastic. Um, and then playing Cardiff Blues. Um, I mean, I'm from North Wales originally, so it's uh, it's, it's nice to be playing uh, a top Wales side like that. Um, and it'll also be good for us to show what what we're all about to, to our home fans. And I know we want to make that a, a bit of a day for friends and family, for all the players as well. So that, that's really important. Is uh, uh, it's not just about the players; it's about their friends, about their family, and, and really feeling very uh, much part of London Scottish. Uh, happy at home, happy at work. Yep, and then of course talking of fixtures, it all kicks off uh, now been revealed with Yorkshire Carnegie at home in the uh, first weekend of September. That'll be a, a tough start, but an exciting one, no doubt. Um, I mean, they're all, all going to be tough, yeah. and I'm sure Yorkshire Carnegie are looking at the fixture list thinking London Scottish is going to be a tough start yeah. a, a, as well. So uh, that's something for us to get very, very motivated about uh, and make sure that, that we start uh, with a great performance. Um, you met some of the members at the AGM last week. Um, Again, any any kind of first impressions on uh, on speaking to those for the first time? Yeah, I mean, I I was really impressed. I mean, a, a very big turnout for for an AGM, um, and there were just certain uh, words, phrases, things I heard. You know, people saying, "I love this club," and it's, it's phrases like that. Um, that's what rugby's all about for, for me. You know, it's a great club, but uh, a club is about people. It's the, about the people in it, the passion that they bring. Uh, people not saying we should be doing this, but saying I'm going to do this. Um, uh, so the passion was really, really clear, and it, it was lovely. Um, 
not just doing the question and answer, but just spending some time in, in the bar afterwards and uh, you know hearing about what the club means to uh, to all the people who, who attended. Yep, um, and just finally talking to supporters, our membership campaign is um, is going out imminently. We'll be uh, we'll be needing the supporters behind us at the Athletic Ground, no doubt, um, even more than more than ever for all of our, all our home games this year. Absolutely crucial. I mean. Uh, we want to put a brand of rugby on, on the field that uh, they can back and they can get excited about. Um, and what's really important for me is is that when they watch this team play, in the effort that the players put on there, that's felt and that's seen from everyone in, in the stands. Um, and we're really looking forward to obviously mixing with, with all the supporters in, in the bar afterwards. Um, and it just makes such a big difference, you know, if, if we've got that support in, in the stands and on, on the sidelines, then a bit of a cliche, but it really is a, it is a 16th man. So um, looking forward to, to meeting everyone as, a, as the season gets going. Superb, thanks for your time. Thanks, Ollie.